Oh, goodness me. Goodness me. All right, so welcome to part 32 on the XC Restoration. Now, <laughs> someone once said to me, why don't your videos do better than they do? And look, I'm reasonably happy with it, how it all goes, because you get sort of four or 5,000 views, sometimes 3,000 views, whatever the case. That's a lot of views. That's a lot of people watching what we're doing here. Um, because what I'm doing is essentially very narrow in terms of audience. If you do a comedy show or some sort of comedy video, I should say, um, where, you know, kids do goofy things or animals do funny things, uh, you, you've just opened up your whole viewing audience. I'm doing an XC Falcon. So, I mean, at the end of the day, it doesn't even appeal to the Chevy or the Holden guys, I wouldn't have thought, but anyway. Um, and the other thing is, of course, a lot of it is disjointed. So, what I'm talking about with that is I'll start doing something and then I go, nah, I don't want to do it. No, I'm going to do something different. So, for example, interesting things to me would be engines and wiring, brake calipers. You know, I'm just really, I don't like doing them. And so I've got some brakes apart here. Now, the other thing that I really don't like doing is bodywork. Oh, I hate it. It's actually difficult for me to articulate how much I don't like doing it. If I was wealthy, I'd make a donation fund and give money to spray painters and people like that. Um, so, okay, we've got a couple of things. We've got a couple of systems we've got to do. We've got to finish the brakes. Okay, so I've started pulling the rear brake. I've started pulling the rear brake calipers apart now, and so I think we're good. Now we need pistons and crap like that. But look, what do you do? Um, so I want to get the brakes done on the car so that at least all three pedals do something. We've got an accelerator pedal now, we put a, a throttle cable in, we've got a nice clutch, even though I'm not terribly happy with the angle of the actuator rod pin, I'm going to have to do something about that later, but whatever the case, it works. Um, we need the brake pedal going, and I want to fix the gear shifter up, because somebody... Where is it? I just remembered. Here we go. If someone has shortened it. They've taken a full, I think it's 130 mil from there to there on a standard one. 120, how much is that? I think it's 100, yeah, about 130 mil, something like that. Anyway, from there, now someone's docked this off and then welded that on. And it's all sort of welded over here. It's a bit of a mess. It is in good nick underneath, so I'm going to cut that. I'm going to make it longer because I want it the standard length, yeah? And so I want to do that. I want to get it drivable, but the other thing that I've got to do is this. And the weather's getting colder now, although we have had some nice autumn weather. Uh, we've got winter in less than a week. And so what that means is that I need to, I wanted to get the headlining in. Because um, I have that. Now I've got to get some, um, I wired in the, the interior light because I changed the interior lights. So I've got all that ready. I've got to put these things in. Um, these vent pods for the back on the C-pillar. I've got to do that and I've got to get everything done so I can put the headlining in and then after the headlining get Jeff to come out put the rear screen in I've got to get some screen moldings Ugh, it goes on and on I am quite looking forward to that because once glass is in it then I can just sort of paint some doors and stick them on the original um, finish date for this car was September 17 this year because it was two years two years after I bought it of course I've already gone into that it's going to be another six months or so um, further on from that so it'll be next year in the first quarter or whatever I don't know so anyway part 32 hope you enjoy it and thank you very much for your support thanks for all the comments love comments I try to answer sort of 30 of them if I can but anyway enjoy so and so here we have something I'm not terribly proud of but I do need to talk about it because we did sort of commit to it in the last episode and that's the um, whitening procedure on the on the overflow bottle now we can't use this overflow bottle anyway because it fits the XD type shroud, which we're not using on this car. And so I tried a couple of things. Now we bleached it and that cleaned it, but it didn't do anything for the whitening side of it. And so I bought this product, which is hydrogen peroxide based. It's the same as what 8-bit uh, guy uses on his computer housings. And it's known to be successful, but um, we don't have, we're, we're sort of a week out of winter, so the sunlight we've got is quite weak, as well as being filtered in that we have quite a bit of overcast weather. Um, so we brush it on, and wrap it up in glow wrap, and stick it outside for a couple of hours, and it made absolutely no difference. So, once fraught with that failure, um, 
bought a, a UV light, stuck it under UV light, still to no avail. So I do have to concede defeat with this one. Um, it's a great product in that it's a, a gel and it brushes on, it does all the right things according to everyone that uses this online, but of course we didn't have success. I will revisit this, even though I'm not using that bottle, it's a good spare one for the XD. So I'm going to revisit it um, coming into summer later in the year. So I still reckon we can win, but at this stage uh, it, it, it didn't bear any fruit. So I do apologise for the fact that a little bit of time was wasted on this, but I do think there were a few things learned. Alright, now I want to talk about these things. Now I didn't know that Ford had... I'm going to take put these on, because I can see better with these ones. I didn't know that Ford had two different types of interior map light, um, sort of high series if you like, uh, interior light. One of them uses a festoon type arrangement, I've got the guts of it over here, and the other one uses this sort of uh, wedge globe that you'd find in a garden outside garden light type thing. Um, I didn't know they made the two different sorts. Now. This one here is dated D4, somewhere, in here. It's got the Ford logo and all this sort of stuff. D4 being 1974. Now, I didn't think these things came out till XDs, but then, of course, I took this one. I think I made a comment on another video about that, but I took this one out of a, a ZH Valley Marquee. So, 76 was the earliest day that I knew about it. This is actually D4, and it uses a base plate. Now I need to figure out which one I'm going to use because I'm going to put the headlining in at some stage. That one would go on top of the headlining. This one has this framework mounted underneath the headlining with that mounted on top of it. So it's sort of sandwiched between if you know what I mean. Um, but the back of them is completely different. Now this one, the, the switches feel a bit duff um, and they're not positive. Now I can fix those I think because they have a strapping that sort of goes around the base of them here and behind. Now this car did have some level of moisture in it which is the reason for some of the surface rust around the switches. This one on the other hand is riveted together. You can see here the sort of casting is burnt over. This is the type that I've got in the XD. Um, so I'm not immediately sure how you change the gloves. I think you have to change it by taking the whole thing off. Whereas this one here uses plastic clips that clip to the inside here and there's just two screws and then it sort of all falls off in your hand and that stays up against the roof. So I don't know, I don't know which one to use. This was donated with a cover by a wonderful gentleman who, that, that views these videos and I've, I can't really recall his name, it was some time ago he gave it to me. I did give him a shout out at the start of one of the videos but that is interchangeable with this one. So that's really the part. Now you can buy these new but they don't fit. They are, of course, General Motors ones, and the General Motors ones used in Calais and Statesman's and so forth are different. They're a little bit shorter and rounder, if you know what I mean. Um, but whatever the case, I didn't want to use... Just a minute. Mm. Oh, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I didn't want to use um, the standard light. I actually like these. They've got a really cool retro sort of feel about them. Hopefully these aren't rusted to the point where they break off. But this is another example of resurrecting old stuff rather than just buying new. I want this stuff to work, so I'm just going to pull that tab straight. Oh crap, I think I've just wrecked it. But if at first you don't succeed, then try and try again. That should just pop out like that. You can see all the rusty stuff starting to come out now. But I reckon this is fixable. I think, I think, I think. So... Okay, I can feel some spring tension. There you go, where is it? Okay, so if I turn that around again, that whole cap's going to come off. And the switch, spring, a little slider. And I just want to make sure this is all kosher, and that is quite clean in there. But we can... Always clean these contacts with scotch Bright. Just make sure it's going to work properly. Because I am keen to use this. And of course with the spring installed that just sits over there and it can't go anywhere. It's sort of trapped in there. So that's easy to do. That's really easy. 
Now I've cleaned it up. That's, that's lovely. There's no issue with that. There's no issue with the, the switch slider. That's all good. The problem with the, the feeling of um, non-positive movement in the switches, if you know what I mean, is the fact that it's got this surface rust on the back of the carrier and it's binding. So we need to get a bit of wet and dry. Perhaps wrap around a screwdriver or something. I, the Dremel would be the best way to do this, but I killed my Dremel. And my brother killed his, so I think he's bought another one now. But on the off chance that I contributed to its death, I'm not sort of going to ask him for it. I've got some switch lubricant um, from j -Car. It's great stuff. Used it on the headlight switches, everything in the, the plimmer. And it just made everything work so much better. It's actually got a solvent in it to clean. It's also got a lubricant. So I might use that. I just want to get the bulk of the sort of rust off there, if you can see what I mean. Because that's the only issue why I can see these switches went positive in the movement. Although there was a lack of operation as well, which is sort of more internal than that. But um, I'll keep going and see what happens. And that's just the stuff, electrical clean and lube. Um, that's just the stuff I'm talking about, which will hopefully not ignite when I go to <laughs> and hold that down so it's on that carrier so I can ascertain that that's right in the right place and then I'll hook that over by way of magic and then just stick that down like that being ultra careful not to let it go because it will ping across the garage at 400 miles an hour. Beauty. Where are we going? Going back that way. All good. Oh, that feels much better. Alright, so if I go with a continuity meter. Okay, that works. At the moment, so. Alright, so that goes, that earths against the car. Oh, I see. So if I go. Alright, so we've got a little road test. It shows up well in the meter, so we'll stick some volts in it. And these are tricky. You've got to actually look at the back of them to make sure you know exactly the wide. So that's working. That's not doing much. This one on the other hand isn't. But that's because it earths through a different spot there. So if I stick it on the back of that, I know that switch is working well. If you want to see it in your own sort of for yourself, you have to sort of put that earth on this, this side here. It's really tricky how they've done it. Oops and you'll find that works then. Now as far as the interior light's concerned, that is down through here and gets its power up at this one here. So if we take that off again, stick the earth over here, and then stick the voltage in there, we have nothing. <laughs> We've got zero. Hang on, where's it going? Here it goes in there. Is that right? Hang on, where's it going? Yes, that's right. That should work. That should work. So if I put the voltage in here, oh, there we go, it's just a bit dirty. Anyway, we know it works now, so that's the main thing. So you have to look at these very carefully if you think of using one. The circuitry is extremely simple. So the constant feed, there's two ways to go up, there's a switched one and a constant one. Um, of course, the, earth, the units are earthed only through these two points here. The switched um, the switch power feed goes onto this side and the constant power feed goes onto that side. So you just have to keep an eye on the back because they have multiple earths and um, multiple power um, inputs, if you like. But it's, it's a very simple thing. It's just that when you first do it, you sort of look at that and say, oh, that's the earth. And then this one doesn't work. And it caught me a bit like that. But at the end of the day, it's all good. Oh, it's got a new throttle cable. I should cut that bit to one another. I've just got to get the car to change the speed. I cable over. But I'll, I'll do all that when um, when I do the front brakes. I'll just sort of jack it up and get under there once when I do the front brakes. There's the cable. Of course, it's nice and pliable rubber and so forth. And of course, that'll fit straight in. 
Uh, lengthwise, this is one from the fair lane. It should be. Same length. Which it is. Whatever the case, I won't throw it because it's operable. But having said that, what I didn't realise, I mean, it, it moves quite well, but nowhere near as free as the new one, so. Um, I can just sort of rig this up now and put it on. It's just a matter of sort of putting that a bit through the flywheel. I wish they'd actually done it the other way because it's upside down. It has to go like that and it has to sort of come around. So that would have been better facing down. It would have had a natural curve in it. But what, whatever the case, it doesn't matter. We can, we can figure that out. Change the uh, speedo covers over underneath. Put a grommet there in the fire one. Done that yet? Um, just wire up. There's a couple of things I need to wire up the starter motor, both the high tension or the the thick lead, if you like, the power feeds the starter, and also the little solenoid one there. Um, I'll change that over. That's just diabolical. And there's just a minor bit of plumbing on the um, on the canister, and then it's all finished under here. But anyway, if we look under here, we've got a boot light. I can't even see the button. So that's all working. And if we go inside the car and short these out, whoops, hang on. Oh, fruit. There we go. We've got interior lights. And we've also got these little map lights here. And we got glove box right in there it's all working and we've got dash lights and lights on circuit works we turn the ignition on all good so our wiring is absolutely finished right well I don't have the right alternator on this car so I don't have the correct 7 volt takeoff for the um, choke so I've got that wired just onto the coil for now which is not the right way to do it uh, interestingly, the thermoquad coil is a 7 volt jobby. I've put this 12 volt one in off the holly, so it's temporary, um, but it will do for now. Right, well, a couple of little bits of air cleaner hardware, of course, we've got this little, um, I don't know what you call that, it's sort of like a thermometer if you like. It lets vacuum through to open the heat riser pipe. There's two uh, filter receptacles here. Now, these are for. Um, the air intake into the actual crankcase, if you know what I mean. They have a sort of a filter that sits in there. Um, I've cleaned this one up. I'm going to use this one, of course. That sits in there. There's a little rounded out bit there so that that hole isn't blocked up. There's a bit of airspace behind there. And it's sort of a Dacron-y type material. I'm not really sure what it is, but I'm not going to use that. I'll get a new one. Um, this one, of course, had this in it. And that's a homemade Scotch-Brite type thing from a kitchen pot scourer. That's not advisable. It's abrasive material, and if any... Um, fragments of it into the engine it's not a good idea um, and it's also probably not impervious to oil though it doesn't look like it's broken down at all and that was sort of just stuffed in there which isn't really all that satisfactory so I don't want to go with that I'd sort of sooner go with a proper one although I don't really want to reuse that uh, these are difficult to find that's the bit that goes on the side and of course the clip that, that holds that in on the side of the air cleaner housing and of course this now I've got a couple of these and the other one I have is broken this one's in good condition it's got both parts of that tree there so it can hold up against the base of the air cleaner then of course your snorkel heat riser thing plugs in and it goes off to this bit which sits over here somewhere and of course the vacuum line which goes to the other side of it which goes into the manifold so I can use that I've oddly enough forgot to clean these up so I'll give that a quick whiz up I think I'll use this one this is in better nick and of course that just sort of plugs over there and holds it to the base of the air cleaner so I can get our little thermo thing this had a couple of little holes which I blocked up with rivets but that just goes through, pretty self-explanatory, and we just plug that over. These can be quite a handful to get on. I might have to use a smaller socket. 
Over each of those. Let's read. Oh, I don't want to scratch it. That's reasonably tight. These are the sorts of things you'd really almost sooner use a, a new one for. And this goes through like that. And that just connects to here which then goes off to the manifold. And this one here just sort of sits under and that goes straight to the snorkel, but I've cut that to the right length once I get it on the car. And just finishing touches, we um, need to give that a nice gracious curve, be there. And just plug him on. If you don't want the heat riser to, to work, you can just flip this around the other way so that that can't operate. And then we've got this one here, which is manifold vacuum, which um, loves it off there. And plug it on, and then we have the air cleaner sort of sorted. This is important. Being old plastic, it's worth supporting that. Just when we stick it on. These have a located the correct X C one. It's a little located there, which goes into that relief there, and that will scratch the crap out of my nice air cleaner, and then it will snap over. And we just join a pipe up there. And we're good to go. I need to get that filter though. Just, um, I might take that down a bit, but at the end of the day, it's not a nice, it's not a bad thing. It's just a little straight here. It's not a bad thing actually to have a wash under there just to stop it chafing, but that's basically our engine bay done. I think now we might start looking at the brakes. Which I don't like doing brakes much, but I think the time's upon us. There's nothing much more we can do here. Still got to it, I tell a lie, I've just got to shorten that a tiny bit. It just doesn't look quite tidy enough. Um, and also the starter, I just haven't wired the starter motor up yet. But the rest of it's all good. And very, very pretty, if you ask me. So there you have it. My attempt at a factory engine bay. Aside from the dodgy looking battery. I reckon, I reckon that looks alright. So in getting parts, I'm sort of at the stage now where I just pick bits and pieces up as I see them, um, as I come up to special. For example, these brake lines here, these are from North Ring at Auto Parts who advertise on eBay. Now that was owned by a chap called Robert Mills, and I used to buy parts from him way back when he had a shop in North Ringwood. An automotive shop. It was actually owned by the Hobsons, who are family friends, and uh, they eventually sold. I'm just going to pull the chair up. They eventually sold, and Rob took it over. Now, he had a great. He he had actually moved the shop to sort of a corner lot in that North Ringwood group of shops, and he's one of these guys. He's a bit like Dennis of Bursons. He's sort of Dennis is almost going to retire, but you can ask him about bits and pieces um, from XAs and XBs, and he knows it. You know, he was the one that pointed out that the uh, rear discs had about a millimetre of offset and then he looked in the book and it reaffirmed what he thought. Um, a lot of parts vendors, a lot of these auto stores, super cheap and auto bar and all these sorts of places, they have a younger sort of cohort that don't know these products nearly as well. And so that's the reason I use Burson and also people like Rob. Now, he sells predominantly through eBay. He doesn't have a shop anymore. Um, I think he's moved to sort of a, a mail shop type thing. Um, but he's a brilliant source of information because he knows his products backwards and of course, you trust people like that, and I always trusted him and also 
you know, chaps of persons far more than the uh, the other shops. So I picked up these. Um, that wasn't through Rob, that was through another company. Again, this is the rear caliber overhaul kits and the front hoses. So I've just got bits and pieces. I haven't got the fr the, the rear hoses rather, I haven't got the front caliber overhaul kits. So I've sort of got bits and bits and pieces, of course. These bits, they're the um, handbrake actuators. These are front caliper springs and caliper bolts and they're banjo bolts for the rear and the little nuts for holding the rear hoses in place and all this sort of stuff. So I'll have a look at the rear calibers first, I think. Right, now here's one of the rear brake calibers. Now, there's a spring there for the handbrake lever. Now, when you change pads on these things, traditionally you use a special service tool like this one, which has two protruding roll pins that then fits into those two holes in the piston and you wind the thing back. Hang on a second, it fits in one way better than the other. There we go. And you wind the piston back. Um, on the bench, you would probably put that in there and just use a spanner to sort of unwind it. Now, it's been a long time, something like 30 odd years, since I've pulled one of these apart. Maybe 25 years, I don't know. And so we need to get it a bit to sort of clean things up. Now, one of the problems with these is they use, and Ford are known for this, these sort of um, external slides and they can corrode and become troublesome and begin to seize. So the later ones of course have sort of three bolts with a, with a bellow on them that's full of grease and or a little bit of grease and they sort of slide better and they're protected against the elements a bit better than what these old things are but we'll start pulling it apart and see what we've got. So I'll start by taking these out here. Whoops. Squeeze those up. CRC. The pin needs to be knocked out from here and then sort of come out there, so we need to put a lot of slip in there. But the problem is, you've got to sort of put it in that little sort of gap. I've got the camera in the way, I can't reach around the camera. I'll try and do it from the other side. And then we've got to just sort of use a pin punch and try and knock it through. But all the while, we don't want to flare that out because in doing that, it'll effectively mushroom it and stop it coming in, or stop it coming out. So this is proving to be an absolute nightmare because that pin is seized inside the slide. I've got it free now. You know, I'm dropping stuff. Um, so, in order to get that out, we need to. We're not quite done yet. It is horrendously difficult to get out, obviously, because of heat and a lack of. Um, lubrication. There's our slide. And so we need to take that and really clean it up. Really, the best thing to do with that is to put a new pair of slides on, but we'll just see how it cleans up first on a Y wheel and polish it. It's got some burrs on there, but that doesn't mean it's trash just yet. Um, pin punch isn't really entering as far as what I'd like, but I've got a couple of sacrificial bolts here, I might just use those. These are probably great, but we just need to just get it that last little bit. I've got some multis on the back so I didn't flick out too fast. But essentially, there's our little charm right there. Now, once that's all cleaned, and again, it might need replacing, but once that's cleaned, anyway, it goes in and out of that slide nice and freely. There it is there. Whereas at the moment, it's seizing solid. So we've got some repairs ahead of us with those two. Really, they should be replaced, but look, we'll just suck it and see. I can lift the caliper off there. The other one's still there. And um, and of course, there's the bracket, which we can clean up. It really should be hydroblasted, this stuff. I'll just suck it and see, though, because I'm trying to save a bit of money. And as long as it's just as safe, I don't really care. This device is out of mum's garage. Dad bought that when I was a baby, I think. Anyway, onward and upward. All right, now these springs, that's for the handbrake arm. And they're side specific, so that can only go on this side. And so we can take this part off here now. Okie dokie. So we'll just take this um, housing off the back. And we've got four, five, sixteen bolts. These are high tensile obviously, and we take them out, and we're not going to plate these, I've already done a lot, they're fine, they're grade 5 fine, so I've got a jar of new ones of those, don't know, might be a bit too short though, um, right, so we take those out, and then this housing is going to come off, now, 
I just can't remember much about these things at all. It's been so long. And they're not so straightforward because they've got that funny sort of spiralled um, thing in them for the handbrake. I just can't remember. I can't remember what's in there. And I see ball bearings. Yum. Okay. Oh, that's bad. Ooh, that's terribly bad. I better get my super maker to find that. All right, so we've got lots of bits. Of course, we have these ball bearings, which I've lost one, but I'll pick that up in a moment. There's a locating pin there as well, which is easily lost, and that sort of fits down one side of it somewhere. I don't know where that came from. There's, so, oh yeah, the locating pin goes there. There's a Torrington bearing in the bottom of it, here, with a shim on the back of it, and of course we have a, a seal there, so it's most important that we don't lose any of that. I'm just going to pop that back in, with that little thing there and clean the parts up individually and of course here we have just the back of the piston release that's the um, rotational part I think so we need to take that all off and suss it out that it's nice and operable um, and see where that leads us right so I've got this thing in the trailer the bleed nipples closed off we have the piston here with a piece of wood so I can't go too far and what I'm basically doing is, brake fluid will probably come out of here, get into the trailer underneath the seams, of course pull the paint out of it, and then rust the trailer out. But I'm just a little bit, um, I'm just being very careful with it, because I don't want the, um, any of the cars affected by brake fluid. These really small rolls of electrical tape that's been kicking around for ages, and it's annoying me, I just want to use it up and throw the spool out. Here we go. And I'm just going to put that around there. Where are we there? Not really. <laughs> I don't know if that's enough, but we'll try it anyway. So I want to be really progressive about this. I've just got another piece of wood in there. Things that are seized with a lot of pressure in them have a way of giving way very quickly, like without warning. You can see I've got the finger off the trigger and it's holding pressure. That compressor is going to cut in a minute. Right, well, I've chucked it in a vise um, and just got a larger set of uh, multis and just grabbed it around that top ring there just to swivel the piston around and it did move um, without too much trouble and it, hopefully that will... here we go. It's not sinking... well here we go. Okay, I think that might have been all that needed. I am worried about splash though, so I'm going to put that there. And um, I just don't want any brake fluid going anywhere. There we go. Oh, there we go. Oh, that looks pretty dirty. But, you don't know with these things until you actually really get stuck into them with a bit of cleaning agent, brake clean, and scotch brite, and that sort of thing, just to get rid of all those marks, just to see what you've got left. If there's rust pits in it, which is probably the case there, then we replace the piston. But time will tell. We need to go and have a look. Inside the bore. Pretty standard issue. Ford cast iron caliper, a bit grungy, but we'll go take a better look. Okay, here we have some parts. Um, again, this is all really dirty stuff. I've run out of gloves, so I'm being really unprofessional by looking this grotty. Of course, we've got these bits here, which we know about. Inside the um, the chamber there, the cylinder there. It's not bad, it's just very, very dirty. It doesn't look like there's been huge amounts of water in there. I think the front was worse than that. I'm keen to see um, where we stand with this piston. I don't want to replace it if I don't have to. Of course, I'm just going to use, and the easiest way I reckon, it's a bit of CRC. Um, and th this is the oldest bit of scotch rod I've got. I think Tutankhamen uses this on his chariot. But um, I just want to see exactly how this comes out, because if I can avoid buying a new piston, Pete is going to be a happy boy. So, just because I've spent so much money on this car. Now, if it looks like it does need new pistons, which this is shaping up awfully well, then I'm going to be, um, I'm just going to buy them, but 
This is the bit here that I was worried about. Uh, no, we're no, we're done. Damn it, that's not good news. Never mind, doesn't matter. We have to be pragmatic about this and say, you know what? It's just that the more stuff I've got for this car, there's there's nothing second hand. I mean, all I'm doing is putting new stuff on. This is a consumable, so there's no surprises there, but, you know, it likes the XW. The second hand bits I went to use on it are the bits that are all useless. There was nothing serviceable about any of it. So anyway, look, I've got to take that out. Why don't we pop that out now? Oh, there we go. Okay, okay. Oh, oh dear. What have we got? We are good. Jeez, what's that? What's that? Oh, it's all full of junk. Look, it's all full of crap. So the ones that are on sale on, on the line are 49.3 diameter. There you go, 49.2. And 44 high, they're saying. 43.75. 4370. All right then, so that's the right one. So what I'll do, regardless of the condition of the other one, I'll just order a pair of these. And then I think we'll just, we, we're just we just better off anyway. Right, so here we are at the end of the video. What I've decided to do, I'm gonna get them all hydroblasted. There's a front caliper over here and a rear one here. And I'm just gonna pop a, just a loose cable tie, just through one side, if you know what I mean. So I'll put one through here, one through there, and the other, ones I won't bother with. Just so I know that these things fit with those. And it's easy with the front, you can sort of figure that out quite easily, but when you get to the back, they're really quite confusing now. All the other bits and pieces, like for example, we'll blast this, this and this, all these other little bits and pieces in the little spiral thing, uh, I'll put in a bag and so that I know, you know, without any shadow of doubt that that's from that side, if you know what I mean. When we start getting to springs, everything gets really confusing. So. That's probably the best way of approaching it. The um, front calipers look pretty awful inside. I've got to dig that seal out, but I'm not going to bother trying to clean that. I'm going to give it to a professional. So whatever the case, I uh, hope you've enjoyed the video. Drive safely, enjoy your classic, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.